Hello and welcome to part four of our Educator Career Chat series. Today we will be discussing career pathways for educators. As an educator, you can make your impact on the world in a variety of ways that best align with your interests, skills, and abilities. In this four-part series, we have been learning best practices for exploring your career pathway in education and setting ourselves up for success in the world of education and the education industry. While most of us think, when most of us think of careers for educators, we often think of K through 12 teachers first. And that's because we're highly familiar with the teachers that we had growing up within the K through 12 system. However, there are other options for educators to make an impact on the world and help others learn, depending on your interests. It's important to explore career pathways within education in order to find your current fit within education for this season of your life, given your interests, personality, and strengths. It's also helpful for us to realize what other careers are out there for us if we have an interest in education for, to keep in mind for the future. All right, so we're gonna dive into some content. Today we'll be briefly reviewing, reviewing best practices for exploring career pathways within education, discussing transferable skills educators possess. We'll also explore possible career pathways for educators and strategies for success in pursuit of the roads less traveled. We will start with a brief recap on our main concepts from part two of our educator career chat on how to explore career pathways. All right, so if you tuned in during our last video, you will recognize this career development process cycle that's up on the screen. I want you to remember that we all explore our career pathways at our own pace. However, we can utilize a similar process like the one up on the screen. Keep in mind that although this looks like a cycle and it all, all the arrows go one direction, but our own processes might look a little bit different. As you explore different career pathways for educators, you will need to engage in self-reflection and research in order, in addition to engaging in concrete experiences in order to make decisions about what pathways might be best for you during this season of your life. So just as a quick recap, self-assessment is what I like to call me-search, and that is your ability to reflect on your interests, values, skills, and talents, and really think through what you want with, in regards to your career. Research is your ability to utilize your self-assessment criteria, those things that you decided are important to you or important to who you are, and analyze fit with on the web and in-person research that you can do for specific job functions, industries, organizations, positions, et cetera. Reality testing and testing experience are the informational interviews or the internships that you can engage in. These are opportunities to actually try something out. I always like to say there's no such thing as a bad informational interview or a bad internship. Every opportunity, every experience we engage in helps us figure out something in relation to our career. Maybe what we figure out is, I do not ever want to do that again. <laughs> and that's a great thing to figure out during this career development process because it helps us make our decision. So the last step in this process is implementing a decision. And keep in mind, depending on where you're at in your process, in your own career development process, this decision might be choosing to stay within your major, identifying a track within your major that you want to engage in choosing different student organizations or professional associations to be a part of, making different connections with alumni that are education majors but are pursuing uh, the business industry, um, or it might help you decide what type of job functions you're going to be searching for in a variety of industries post-graduation. Again, when you begin exploring career pathways for educators and considering what pathway might be best for you, you will need to consider your natural strengths and abilities in addition to your learned transferable skills and competencies that you have worked so hard to develop. You will also want to consider aspects of your personality, including what you value and what your career goals are, in addition to some of your personal goals. Finally, you will want to make sure that you are always, always, always keeping your passions and interests at the forefront by considering your career interest area or areas. 
which likely include education since you're tuning into this video. You might have the urge to think, but I majored in this, or I have always wanted to do that, or I studied four years in elementary education classrooms, or I have taught 12th grade economics for eight years, and I hear that. It's hard to break ourselves of the mindset that we have been working hard to be one specific thing or that we have only been trained to be that one thing. This is when it becomes incredibly important to consider the career competencies and our transferable skills that we have developed through our years in education and the experiences we've engaged in. We have not only been working toward one thing, we have been working to be career ready. Think about how your education and experience has broadly prepared you for life as a professional. What transferable skills and career competencies have you developed through your experience? The eight career competencies up on your screen right now were developed by the National Association of Colleges and Employers with a national survey of employers across all industries and job functions um, that do recruit for all types of students and alumni. These are the eight competencies that all employers, regardless of industry and job function, are looking for candidates for their open positions. Once you have broken yourself of the mindset that you have only been trained for one specific thing, it's time to tell your story to employers in a way that demonstrates your knowledge and experience translates really well to this other industry that you're interested in or this specific job function that you're interested in that isn't K through 12 teaching. And lucky for you, this career competency reflection in language also prepares you to speak with employers about how you are the best fit for their position. The key when you're communicating with employers about how you are prepared for their position because of your knowledge and experience in relation to education, the key is to communicate about your specialized knowledge and years of experience in relation to the specific position you are applying to. And in order to do that, we're going to talk about our transferable skills and competencies. All right. We're gonna transition into talking about select pathways for educators. And when we talk about these career pathways that are up on the screen right now, I really do wanna stress that this is not an exhaustive list. There are new positions being created every single day um, and the future of work is really changing. So thinking that there could be an all-inclusive list is a little bit silly. Um, so I didn't try to make an inclusive list of all the different opportunities you might seek but these are nine of the most common career pathways for educators, um, specifically educators that are either students or alumni of ASU. So we're gonna go through these different pathways, but I want you to keep in mind, with knowledge of your interests, personalities, and abilities, you might feel immediately drawn to some of these career pathways. But with additional research that you do on the web about these pathways, you might find yourself ruling out certain pathways. However, experience will be what really helps you exploring these different career pathways that we're going to talk about. Um, seeing how you um, interact with that pathway in everyday life will help you consider if you've found a fit for this season of your life. So let's dive in and start talking through different career pathways. So we'll start with the first pathway, pre-K through 12 education is one of the pathways you might want to consider. And within K through 12 education, or rather pre-K through 12 education, there's a number of different career fields you might consider, such as teaching or administration. But have you considered different special services that you may need an endorsement for, such as English as a second language, library or information services, or test preparation? What about considering curriculum design or supervision? Now, when we're thinking about potential employers for pre-K through 12 education, we automatically think of public, charter, or private schools at the elementary, middle, and secondary level. But have you considered overseas schools? What about recreation programs and camps? 
Some strategies for success in regards to this specific career pathway would be to become knowledgeable of the certification requirements in your state or in your country. You will want to research certification or endorsement needs for your specific career field, location, and potential employers. You also want to keep in mind that within this area, for some of the specialized services areas, graduate study may be required. So you'll want to research degree level that might be needed for your career field of interest and your potential employer. The next career pathway you might want to be considering is higher education. While we know we could be faculty or conduct research um, and also teach at the college level, did you know you can do informational, information or library sciences in higher education? What about curriculum development or instructional design? There are also opportunities to be um, within administration or student support services within higher education. What I mean by student support services are have you considered being a career advisor, an academic advisor, working for admissions? Those are all opportunities that could be available to you. Employers that you might want to consider for the area of higher education would be your four-year and two-year colleges and universities, in addition to community colleges, technical schools, and medical and professional schools. You will want to research if graduate study is required for the specific organization you're hoping to work for or the specific position you're hoping to apply for. Um, however, there are entry level positions within higher education and they vary depending on the institution you're applying for that do not require a graduate degree. But do keep in mind you may need a graduate to pursue graduate study for advancement within student service and administration positions, and you will definitely need graduate study for most of your teaching positions at the faculty level. Another strategy for success in this area for you is to seek on-campus student leadership positions while you're a student here at Arizona State University. Another career pathway you might wanna consider is adult and continuing education. What I mean by this are the following potential career fields, in-service education, staff development, professional development, leisure-oriented education, GED preparation, and English as a second language courses. And keep in mind, that's not an exhaustive list. Some potential employers for you with an adult and continuing education might be community organizations, correctional institutions, museums, adult daycare centers, and K-12 school systems. You also might want to consider language schools that are here domestically and also overseas. Some strategies for success in this area would be to research certification and accreditation standards for your specific career field of interest. You may also want to consider graduate studies in adult education or in a specialization for a career field of interest that you might have. I want to talk about the next two potential career pathways in conjunction. So when we're considering business and communication, you can do a variety of things and employers within the business and communication career areas are very interested in students who have studied education or folks who have experience in education. So some potential fields of interest you might want to consider are training and development, curriculum development, instructional design, publishing, editing, and technical writing, sales, customer service, management, human resources, and more. Some potential employers you want, might want to consider are consulting firms, business and industry training facilities, large or small manufacturing companies, large or small retail and customer service industries, restaurant and hotel change, chains, hospital and healthcare organizations, recruiting firms, and large financial industry um, leaders. Some strategies for success that you'll definitely want to consider if you're going to be pursuing business and communication is that you need to be prepared to work in another area of human resources before moving to training and development positions. You also may want to consider graduate studies in order to specialize in some of these career fields of interest that I mentioned. You'll also want to make sure that you're mastering technical skills required for that career field of interest that you're considering. 
And you'll want to make sure that you are being prepared to start in entry level positions or management trainee programs if you're looking to move into the business career interest area. The next career pathway I'd like to discuss is government and social or educational policy. Some different fields of interest you might want to consider in this pathway area are administration, planning, evaluation, management, teaching, advocacy, and law enforcement. Did you know that there are over 170 federal government agencies that would be happy to hire you for your skills and specialized knowledge? You might also want to consider social service agencies and your state and local government. Some strategies for success with this career pathway are to acquire experience through volunteering or completing an internship within a government agency. And there's actually a program called the Pathways Program that is just for current students or recent graduates that are under two years out of graduating from a university. So you might wanna look into that program to gain some experience, some entry-level experience within the governmental sector. You'll also wanna become familiar with the government application process by visiting with Career and Professional Development Services. The next career pathway um, we have up on the screen is nonprofit, but I also wanna talk about it in conjunction with social service. So these are our helping industries. Nonprofits are businesses, so if, if you're interested in business, don't just consider the private sector, consider nonprofits. Um, nonprofits, there are a ton of fields that you might be interested in, including direct service, programming, administration, management, public relations, case management, advocacy, volunteer coordination, and the list goes on and on. Now in terms of some different employers you might want to consider, you might want to think about service organizations that you are very passionate about. You may want to consider youth organizations if you love working with kids. You also might want to consider hospitals, community recre recreation centers, immigrant and refugee service providers, family service agencies and programs, correctional institutions, consulting firms, and also rehabilitation organizations. But again, not an exhaustive list. Some strategies for success within the nonprofit and social service areas are to gain some experience with the nonprofit and social service industries, research organizations' values and make sure they're a good fit with yours, and figure out what you're passionate about. What are the causes you're passionate about? Who do you wanna help and how do you wanna help them? That self-reflection is really going to help you consider um, what type of nonprofit or social services employer you might want to apply to. You might also wanna consider developing a wide range of technical skills such as presenting, grant writing, and fundraising as many nonprofit professionals fill many different roles. And finally, you'll wanna make sure you're keeping up to date with what graduate study might look like or appropriate licensures that you may need depending on your specific career field of interest. And finally, entrepreneurship is a career pathway that anyone can pursue. So if you find that you have an entrepreneurial mindset, you're always coming up with ideas, you're resilient, you're excited about starting new opportunities and seeing them through, entrepreneurship might be for you. Um, so you will want to see if that fits with your personality, fits with your strengths and your interests, and you may want to start something of your own and engage with that. So now that we have discussed some different career pathways that might be options for you as educators, and again, I just need to stress, that isn't all that you could pursue. Um, I want you to keep in mind that exploring is easy. Deciding is challenging. So I can give you career pathways all day. However, I'm not going to be able to tell you exactly what you should do. No career assessment is going to be able to tell you exactly what you should do. You need to reflect, research, and engage in meaningful experiences in order to make your decision. Again, it's hard to know if a career pathway is right for you without trying it out. 
Keep in mind, there are experiences that you can apply for or create to further assess your fit for this season of your life. Review the rest of our educator career chat videos if you are wanting tips on how to communicate and network to create these opportunities for yourself, or if you are hoping to gain additional insight on how you can utilize the opportunities up on the screen in order to explore and assess the best fit for you for right now. All in all, you do not have to have everything all figured out right now. Education is changing and new opportunities are on the horizon. Knowing yourself and what options are available to you right now during this time in your life, that's going to be what's important to you and it's going to provide you with a direction to guide you. But you will have the opportunity to continuously explore education career pathways and always pursue the best path for you for right now. I'd like for you to pause this video and take just a moment or two to reflect on what one thing um, is that you can do in the next 24 hours to put yourself on the path of success within your career exploration. And keep in mind, the further you start, the further you're going to go. Uh, or rather, the sooner you start, the further you're going to go. Thank you for tuning in today. Hope you have a great rest of your day.